Hey everybody, boy, do we have a cool video for you today because we are at Heidi and Franny's garage and I've decided to bite the bullet and see what a mistake I have made by buying this red bug. So guys, thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It's so wonderful to have you over. Really appreciate it. Definitely check out their channel. You've had a couple Super Beetles. I have. I've had Beetles back in the day and just absolutely adore these cars. Now what I'm worried about is I've been here for six seconds and I think this thing has already left a pee spot on their beautiful driveway. Oh, right. I feel horrible. <laughs> so we'll get it inside and then we'll uh, we'll uh, see, see what a mess it is. Now Franny, we need to get this top down because it's going to make me feel a little better about the purchase. Yes, yes. Oh, Oh yes. Oh look at that. So the, the funny thing is is that when you're sitting in here and you're driving you, <laughs> you really can't see out the back of these cars because the top sits up so high. Um, funny thing, neat little piece of trivia is the new Beetles uh -huh. that they put out in the early 2000s they wanted to make sure that the back, when the top went down, that the back of it looked identical to the old cars. No way! Yeah they did and that was also a problem. I had a 2003 uh, Beetle convertible Turbo it was awesome. Ooh. I love that car, but it was the same problem. When the top was down, it would sort of flop down like this, and it would sit up, and you couldn't see out the back of the car. It's That's hilarious. such a cool piece of trivia. Yeah. I don't think this thing is a valve adjustment in 45 years. Oh my gosh! Well, yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> they that should be done every. Oh, I think it's like 3,000 miles. It's kind of almost every other oil change, maybe, or every oil change. Is it really okay? Yeah, about every other oil change. The other thing is, that I noticed since it was pretty flooded when I went to start it. Yep. I'm guessing I haven't looked back there, but I'm guessing it has an aftermarket fuel pump in it. You are 100% right. Yeah. All right, Franny. So, what's what's the first disaster you see back here? What do you? What's good and what's not? It really doesn't look bad at all. Uh, my only thing is that we've obviously got an issue with this aftermarket fuel pump. My guess is that it's putting out too much pressure. I've seen that so many times. I've had to add regulators to these Brazilian aftermarket pumps. Because what happens is that right now, there's still a decent amount of pressure in the system. Okay. And the fuel line going up into the carburetor will blow past the needle and seat, overflow the float chamber and gas will just kind of come over the top of the carburetor and into the intake manifold huh. and dribble out into the cylinders and then it gets super super rich. That's really interesting. And I knew that because I had to push the pedal all the way to the floor to start it and that's just kind of a thing not too bad but I'm not a big fan of alarm systems they <laughs> tend to, to trash out electrical systems. Now okay from your experience uh, when people do stuff like this right where they, they plop on an aftermarket carburetor uh, is the new stuff as good as the original or are you always compromising it? Yeah, it's you know, it's just a copy. So uh, this is an MP and it's a 34 P3 So I think that's what they're trying to emulate with it a lot of these carburetors aren't that bad Actually, I haven't seen a lot of problems with them. They don't leak and uh, But the old ones can be rebuilt yeah. and I still have the old one. So maybe, maybe I'll go that route. Oh, if you do Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. You can rebuild the old one pretty easily and unless it's got, I mean I had one for instance that the, the little shut off over here was stripped out and if it's got metal fatigue and metal problems that's one thing but. Very interesting. Um, yeah so, um, no it doesn't look too bad. It really doesn't. These guys, very very important that these are on here. So that's great to see. So many cars I see these are missing. Now are these for the heating system or are those for actually cooling the engine? Yes and yes okay. actually. So both things. If these, these are for the heat exchangers down there, uh, but if these are off then you've got quite a bit of air from the shroud just going into nowhere and you really don't want that. You really want to make sure that if the heater boxes are closed that all the air is going to cool the engine. That's pretty important. Now you've had a bunch of these and this is one thing I've always wondered. So, I mean, talk about like the, 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 the king of air cooled up there, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> they never had like temperature gauges. How do you know if a Volkswagen or an old Porsche is overheating? Um, let's see. So they have a, they have an oil, let's see, they have an oil light and a generator light. I, generally it stops running. <laughs> <laughs> um, they get awfully hot. You can get a thermometer to put in your oil 
your oil dipstick. You can pull this out. The, it's very, it's a cute little addition for the 356s. Hmm. And you just put it in there. It has a little temperature dipstick on, uh, sort of like a dipstick, but it has a little temperature gauge on top of it. And that's kind of neat. But uh, other than that, um, I mean, I imagine it's not good to overheat them, right? No, it's actually quite bad for them as it is for any car, even air cooled or liquid cooled, just overheating is bad. So uh, you keep it in tune. You, uh, there is one thing I'm noticing that it's missing and it's gonna require an engine pull to fix that. Mm -hmm. And that is this rubber gasket and it's all kind of broken and cracked. Oh yeah. There's, it needs to have a rubber gasket all the way around to seal the engine from the bottom of the car. That's very important for cooling and uh, really something that needs to get done. But these engines are so easy to pull out. They're literally four bolts, fuel line, a couple of electrical things, and you just pull them back, boom, they go down. What's your record? Oh, uh, I, I think I pulled, so the 356 is very similar. Um, once I've got things disconnected, I think we got the engine out in maybe less than half an hour, and we were being very careful. So you can pull a Beetle engine out. Some people say they can pull it out in 10 minutes. That might be a little bit fast, but uh, it's not that bad. There's just four bolts in the back, and I think it has two studs on the bottom. You take the nuts off, boom, pull the engine back. You pull this tin out <laughs> so that you can move it and uh, just have something to cradle the engine underneath. Now these guys, it's neat to see an original air bath air cleaner on the car that I imagine it's a little bit grimy and dirty because people just don't clean it. Um, and it's a bit of, it's a little bit of a maintenance thing. You take this off, the car comes off. It's just a single bolt here and pop this guy off and you can pull this out and there'll be oil up to about here all the way around. And the air, as it comes in, flows through that oil and across that oil to catch any dirt and grime. Once again, these cars were built specifically for almost post World War II Germany. You didn't have a lot of tools. You didn't have a lot of spare parts. How can we build this to where you don't have to replace a paper air filter every time? Hmm. How can you fix this on the side of the road? Um, air and oil do it all. Um, the famous <laughs> quote from John Murr from, from the book, yeah, um, yeah. how to keep your Volkswagen alive for the complete idiot. Uh, that's mm -hmm. an amazing book. It's got everything in it that you need. And he, he's a big fan of the simplicity of this design. And everybody seems to overcomplicate these cars, and there's no need for it. They do really well by themselves. Stays forever. All right. Wow. Look at all that. New bushings. Look I'll at take that. that. Yay. So I assume they're, 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 they're red, so they must be, you know, they're, that'll add 10 horsepower, Ooh. right? <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. There's also a steering damper here. Looks like they, they put a new one in. That's good. You can see that they've... They did pull, they must, this looks like it's been replaced. Okay. It's awfully nice and clean. Not so happening up here. I'm not sure what's going on up there. It <laughs> looks like the, the uh, you can, if you can see, can you see up in there? Oh yeah, that's not, not looking so hot. Yeah, Is that like a little rubber guy that's just totally falling the, apart? Yeah, it's off the steering box up there, but there's mm -hmm. a, there's a, uh, sort of a universal joint for the steering. Now the front end of a Super Beetle is totally different than a standard Beetle, right? Yes, and it has a completely different suspension. So it has a McPherson strut, which is totally different. Doesn't use the torsion bars up front, like the old ones did. Now, which one's better? You know, that's a good <laughs> question. Uh, the one nice thing about the McPherson strut is it gives you quite a bit more trunk room. You've got that nice deep area in the trunk and the tire sits flat down in there. The Torsion bar cars, the wheel sort of sits at an angle and kind of, you don't get much trunk room up front. So that's kind of dumb um, as far as a, you know, a difference between the two maybe, but I don't know. I think these probably do handle better. I like the softness of a torsion bar, mm -hmm. actually, to be honest. I think they work great, but I'm so old school with this stuff and I heard they're a little more durable too. Like yeah. when you're building a Baja bug, you want to start with the standard. Yeah, they always use those for Bajas. They don't want, wouldn't use something like this for a Baja bug. Various little bits like this, mm -hmm. um, little rubber grommets for different things. Um, all the little rubber, there should be a rubber little cover over every one of these things. And they're oh, all gotcha. missing. So anything rubber needs to be replaced. Yeah. yeah. So you can see in there, a little shiny thing that you're looking at is the adjustment for the brakes. Yeah, the little star. Yep, and there's one on the other side as well. So the other, the outside holes here, so you can check 
your pads and they actually look pretty good. Crossbar looks in pretty good shape here. Yeah. There's a little bit of rust here that I can see that's a little. And that's just probably structural. Yeah. yeah I'm sure. Yeah. This bit here. Do you think most Volkswagens at this point have new pans put in? Oh yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. And certainly our 356 has as well. Hmm. They're just one of those things that the salt and the, and the grime from the road just eats these things. Super interesting. Yeah, you can see that. I've never driven this in the snow, but even still, like, how it just sticks. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's just terrible. There's something going on up here. This bit here. Yeah. You see the rusty bit here? Oh, yeah, look at that. So it's like the whole area under the top rusted out, and they yeah. just plopped like a fiberglass thing in it. Yeah. Bummer. That can be fixed. Oh, I see it. Looks it's like your starter nice. has been replaced. That's stuff you can buy, like if you wanted to buy that patch panel, that'd be something you could get. Yes, you yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you can buy every panel for the car. You can take a look at our pads there. They don't look too bad. You can see it's still got a decent amount of meat up against it. This one's a little more worn. The leading pad's a little more worn. Oh, yeah, interesting. Um. Now what about all of this oil everywhere? That's um, all over your beautiful driveway now. No, it's fine. Here's what, oh, before we get to that, this is why your heater doesn't work on this side. Okay. So it's just disconnected. It's just, <laughs> it, it looks like this, this wire broke. It looks like the transmission might be uh, just dripping a little bit there. And we've got a little bit on the seal of the transmission back here. Okay. Always, when I'm looking underneath the cars, the first thing I'm always looking for is any, is there anything wet, you know? Right. So, we're looking at wetness here, here. So this this just really screws in until it kind of stops. It's like a tapered thread. So that just probably needs some, you know, probably should do the transmission oil if you haven't done that. Now, when you pull the engine, does the transmission come with it or do you no, need the No, it doesn't. Okay. It, it leaves the transmissions. The, so the, yes, the transmission stays put and you pull the engine out and then I would put this on a stand and I would power wash the whole thing and get I mean, it nice and clean. Yeah, when there's this much oil everywhere, like how do you even start to diagnose where it's coming from? You, you really can't. And that's part of the problem. I mean, that they just, they need to be cleaned first because everything's greasy and gooey. Mm -hmm. So you can't really tell where it's coming from like this. Where did all this come from? Did it come from here? Did it come down from here? Remember the air is blowing this way when you're driving. So was there something upstream? Did this come? <laughs> it's impossible to tell. But once you clean it, you get a much better indication. So I was talking to the, the previous owner of this car and yes. she's not entirely sure like the engine has ever been like rebuilt. Oh my, um, wow. Now is How that- How many miles around the car? 117,000. Okay. All is right. that like, you hear the word rebuild and typically that's like 25, 30, 40,000 on like, a fancy car. I mean, is that something like a home mechanic can do on a yes. Volkswagen? Yep, absolutely. And all the parts are available. You can take bits to the machine shops around town and get things done. We have a couple of good ones downtown actually hmm. that they can they can do whatever you need to get done on the car. They can pull, like, they can re-grind your cranks, they can redo your heads, all that stuff. Not particularly expensive. Wow, interesting. Yeah. So like all of this, like if, if the two halves of what, what the crank case are leaking, Sure. That can all be taken apart and yes. cleaned. And, yeah, okay. crack the case apart and when they put it back together, reseal it. And when, these engines should not leak. I, that's a, I know everybody's, <laughs> we all bought these cars, most of us did, when they were used. And they'd been used for a while. And yes, they do have a tendency to leak over time. But they didn't leave the factory and they didn't <laughs> leave the Volkswagen agency leaking all over the place. So they shouldn't leak. They really shouldn't. Huh. Transmissions shouldn't leak and engines shouldn't leak. How long they stay that way, that's another question. <laughs> well, yeah, but doesn't right? that have something to do with whether or not you're using a synthetic oil or something that like that? That can have a big difference. Yes, that can be a big difference. these newer mm -hmm. oils now can make it look like a sprinkler. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> you throw a synthetic oil in these things, they're designed even more so to get in between things. And so they get in between the holes in your case and out they come. Yeah, so really the big issues are heater channel yep. and then that, that missing panel. Sure, the missing panel <laughs> above the, the engine. So that's a thing. Um, I would definitely pull the engine on okay. this. And it, at the very, the, like number one, besides after you clean the engine, would be definitely to replace that gasket all the way around. That's really important okay. for the cooling of the engine. Yep. And uh, if you want it to run better, I would work on that fuel pump so okay. that it's not overflowing and causing a fuss. 
Thank you so much for absolutely. For this. I think it would be super fun. Um, I know like your time is hugely valuable, but I would love to like learn about some of these things and like let's how they do work. it. Let's do yeah. it. That'd It'd be, be way really fun. fun. Yeah, yeah it would. Um, so maybe we'll set something up and yeah, absolutely it'd be huge. As yeah. always, check out Heidi and Friendy's Garage for much more in-depth and overall better videos than what I can do. Oh, oh that's not, not true. true. <laughs> <laughs>